welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll bend and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. Today we're talking about the great hornbill. Ubik 3D Printing Builds a Bird, a Better Life by Leila Narji. In the grassy space he shares with three African antelopes, an obesin ground hornbill named Carl looks for insects and small mammals. He pinches them between the tips of his long curved beak, then he eats them like any normal hornbill would. He tosses them in the air, catches them in his mouth, and swallows them whole. Delicious. But eating a meal wasn't always so easy for Carl. When he first came to the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington, D.C., part of his lower beak was worn away. The bone that supported it was too short. This made Carl's beak extra fragile. When Carl used his beak to dig for food or when he wiped it on a branch to clean it, the beak would chip. Over time, it got shorter and shorter. So Carl had to adapt. Instead of gobbling small, juicy bugs, he could only eat bigger meatballs and tiny mice the zoo staff fed him. He picked them up by tilting his head sideways and scraping his beak against the ground. Because of his broken beak, Carl's diet didn't have much variety. His keepers had to weigh him every week to make sure he was getting enough to eat. They also worried, was Carl bored? In the savannas of northern Africa, a beast and ground hornbills keep busy. They roam up to seven miles a day on their scaly black feet hunting. They might stick their beaks into hollows to rustle up spiders. They might catch tasty lizards or nibble sweet berries off bushes. With so much of his lower beak gone, Carl couldn't nibble, and he couldn't hunt the critters that wandered into his enclosure. Carl was missing out on many common hornbill behaviors. A male hornbill in the wild blinks his velvety eyelashes at the arid landscape. When he notices a venomous puffer, puff adder, he pounces. He snatches up the snake using his beak like toothless tongs. Then he crushes the snake's head. He might bring this prize to his mate and chicks in their nest. Carl couldn't do these things. His keepers wanted to breed him, but Carl's stubby beak made him a poor choice for a partner. How could he use his beak to deliver food to his family? His keepers knew Carl couldn't mate unless his beak was fixed. They just had to figure out how to help. James Steele, the zoo's veterinarian, came up with a solution. He molded an artificial beak for Carl out of a plastic called acrylic. He slipped this prosthesis over Carl's bottom bill. Carl was able to pick up all the critters and mice and berries he wanted. But the hand-sculpted beak didn't fit very well, and the acrylic was too heavy. After a few weeks, the prosthesis broke off. James built another one, then another. He built Carl 10 acrylic beaks in two years. None of them worked for long. Then James made a discovery. Across town, the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History had an old obesin ground hornbill skeleton in its archive. That hornbill had been about Carl's size when it was alive in the 1930s. Could that hornbill skull help the zoo staff make a beak for Carl? Could they use it as a template for a 3D printed prosthesis? It was worth a try. James carefully measured the length, width, and thickness of Carl's beak with a special tool called a caliper. He marked the angle of the beak's curves. Bobby McCusker, the zoo's exhibit specialist, made a computer model of the old hornbill skull. To do this, he put the skull into a 3D scanner. He spun It spun on a turntable. Lasers beamed into its nooks and crannies, taking a picture of it from every which way. When Bobby uploaded this picture into a computer program, he could change it however he wanted. This would be the template for Carl's new prosthesis. Now Bobby had to figure out how to shape the beak. There were a lot of challenges. For starters, birds' beaks aren't symmetrical. Bobby adjusted the computer model to get it up to line to get it to line up with Carl's unique bumps. He had to make sure the prosthesis would fit over them. A hornbill's beak has a groove inside it for scooping up drinking water. Bobby knew it was important to match the groove in the prosthesis with the groove in Carl's real beak. Curator Tony Barthel is in charge of caring for Carl and the other animals at the zoo's Cheetah Conservation Station exhibit. New Carl's new beak had to be both strong and light. He helped choose the material to make it. Regular 3D printer plastic bent under pressure. The toughest printer plastic shared, shattered if it was hit too hard. The plastic in between was just right. Tough and durable, but flexible too. Now Bobby was ready to print out a prototype. The team used it to experiment with the fit. Assistant curator Gil Myers held Carl while Bobby slid it on his beak. It stuck and puckered in all the wrong places. Bobby made a second prototype, then a third, each time he tweaked and fiddled some more. After five months of working out the details, Bobby printed a fourth beak. They all held their breath as they slid it onto Carl. 
Finally, the fit was just right. Now they had to attach it. Assistants held Carl and gave him a medicine to calm him so he wouldn't squirm. Carl needed to be perfectly still so his keepers could attach the beak in the right position. They monitored Carl's heart rate and breathing to make sure he was healthy and safe. While he was calm, they even gave him a nail and feather trim. Then James sanded Carl's bill to smooth it. This would help the prosthesis stick. He marked it with a pencil to show how far up the prosthesis should slide. James squeezed on glue and attached the prosthesis. Gil held it in place until the glue set. Then James filled in gaps with more glue. 30 minutes later, Carl had a new beak. The question now was, would it work? Back in his enclosure, Carl rubbed his beak against a branch like he was trying to scrape it off. But when he saw a meatball to eat, Carl nibbled it right up without tilting his head. The beak worked! Still, it isn't quite perfect. Carl's beak has to be glued back on every few months, but he doesn't seem to mind. Carl spends his days wandering around the antelopes as he hunts for mice and mealworms and crickets. Carl can eat whatever he wants now, just the way a hornbill should. He also calls out looking for other hornbills. Thanks to his handy new beak, Carl is ready to meet a mate. You have been listening to Carl's New Beak by Layla Narji. This one's called The Beehive. Here is the beehive. Where are the bees? Hidden away where nobody sees. Watch as they fly out of their hive. One, two, three, four, five. Bzzz, they're alive! We're going to do it one more time. You ready? Here is the beehive. Where are the bees? Hidden away where nobody sees. Watch as they fly out of their hive. One, two, three, four, five. Bzzz, they're alive! Bill by Grace Hansen. Great hornbills are found in Nepal, India, and a few other countries. They mainly live in tall, wet, evergreen forests. Great hornbills are large birds. They can grow up to 50 inches long. They are the heaviest hornbill species. A great hornbill's wingspan can be 60 inches long. The flapping of its wings can be heard from far away. Great hornbills have black, white, and yellow feathers. They have a solid black band on their white tails. The bird got its name for the great cask that sits on its bill. A female's cask and bill are almost entirely yellow. A male's cask and bill are orange, white, black, and yellow. Fruit is the great hornbill's favorite food. The bird also eats small mammals, reptiles, and insects. Great hornbills are social. They can be found in pairs. They also live in small family groups and smaller flocks. Before a female lays her eggs, she finds a hollow tree. She builds a nest in its trunk. Then she seals herself inside using mud and dung. The male feeds the female through the hole. She does not come out of the tree until her chicks have feathers. Four facts. Great hornbills lay one to two eggs at a time. They, the giant cask helps a great hornbill make louder noises. The bird's cask looks heavy, but it is actually very light. Glossary. Cask. On hornbills, the horny helmet-like growth that sits above the beak. Hollow. Having an empty space on the inside. Social. Living in groups instead of alone. Species, a group of living things that looks much, that look much alike and can have young ones with one another, but not with those of other groups. Wingspan, the distance from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other. You have been listening to Great Hornbill by Grace Hansen. Thanks for joining us for today's Animal Explorers Hornbill. We began our journey today with the moving true life story of Carl's New Beak by Layla Narji, published by Capstone, and we got to learn how... Uh, Workers at the Smithsonian built a new beak for this animal so he could return to a normal life and wouldn't continue to be damaged every time he tried to eat. Can you imagine that your mouth starts to fall away every time you eat? And how cool is it that they worked so hard to get him a new mouth? Then we read Great Hornbill by Grace Hansen, published by Abdo, and we got to learn all sorts of cool real-life facts about this type of bird that is usually found in Asia. And I love how they come in different colors and all sorts of the cool stuff we read about them. Thanks for joining us for today's Animal Explorers Hornbill. We'll see you soon for our next animal. Let us know your favorite animal so we can cover it on a future Animal Explorers.